Hello students, today we are going to learn about refraction through spherical surfaces. First of all, what do you mean by refraction? Refraction is bending of light when it travels from one medium to another medium. The light should have been traveling in a straight line which is a rectilinear propagation of light but it is bending. This bending of light when it crosses one medium to another medium is called refraction. Whether it will bend towards the normal or away from the normal depends on whether it comes from rarer medium or is it moving from rarer to denser medium or denser to rarer medium. If it is rarer to denser it is going to be towards normal because it slows down. When it is denser to rarer it bends away from the normal because it speeds up. With this basic concept we are also studied about Snell's law. Snell's law is the ratio of sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction is a constant called refractive index. And I also said refractive index is the ratio between two similar quantities. So naturally it is a dimensionless constant. Okay. Today what I am going to do, we are going to learn about spherical surfaces. Already in the reflection, we learnt about spherical surface called concave mirror. But in concave mirror, the mirror is an opaque object which means the light cannot pass through that. The light was bouncing back. We called it as reflection. Now we had concave mirror and we had convex mirror. Okay, And we learned the properties of them also. Now in this kind of uh, refraction we are going to have a surface through which light is going to pass through. Naturally we will take lens. Lens which you are going to now learn today the spherical surface we talk about is lens. How do you make a lens? Again as usual lenses are of two types. One is convex lens and another is con cave lens okay so these two lenses are there how to make a lens i am going to tell you imagine that this surface the board is like a thick thin glass slab we assume it to be a thin or a little thicker glass slab you know your glass slab you see in the lab physics lab right so like that now i assume it to be a border like this i am going to draw a border for you fine so what I am going to do, I am going to take a form a circle, okay. See I am going to keep a center here, I am going to keep a center here and keeping the center here I draw an arc, I draw an arc. Where am I drawing? All in the glass slab, fine. Now this is one surface I have got. Now what I do, I come to the other side of it and then I keep this point as a reference and uh, this as the middle point here let us say now i have to connect it here okay one to two right one to two fine yeah keeping this as the center keeping this as the center i am drawing another arc now what happened i complete what you see here is called a lens this is a thin lens but on the board I have drawn a thick lens actually but actually the lenses will be very thin which you will find in the laboratory. Like now what the lens I have made here it is bulged outward it is curved in this way and uh, this whole part of it now you don't need this slab you don't need at all because I will cut it off and make only part of it and I am going to take that as the uh, refracting surface. Now let us watch carefully there are two centers are there. This is called center of curvature. What do you call it? Center of curvature. Now how many centers of curvature are there? Two centers of curvatures are there C1 and C2. Now 
I am going to call this as C1 and I am going to call this as C2. I will tell you why. I will justify why I call that as C1 and C2. It is interchangeable. Fine. Now, what I am going to do? I am going to connect these two centers with a straight line from the middle. Okay. Now, let me connect it like this. Right. With a straight line. Fine. Now, what you see here? The center here and the center here, they both are touching each other. That means the centers are connected together. Fine. And the middle point of it, the middle point of the lens is called optical center. What is it called? Optical center. Now remember carefully, right? It is a thin lens. I have drawn too thick. But remember, otherwise the lens will be a thin lens. Okay. Now, this one part is there. Right? Let us take a ray of light coming parallel. And let me draw a middle part here. Let us say first part here. Right? Let us take a ray of light parallel like this. And what is this ray actually? This is called principal axis. Principal axis connects the two centers of curvature. Right? And now, I take a ray parallel to principal axis. And now, you also know that the ray which is passing through the center of curvature of this, that will go without deviation. So, the ray which is passing in the principal axis will go without deviation. Now, it is touching this surface here. Now, what is going to happen to this surface? Or what will happen? It will bend. It has to go in a straight line. But the medium is different. And this is air. And this is glass. Okay. And again you got air. So what will happen? You will find that the ray will bend like this. Right. At this point the ray is going to bend like this. Ah, this is called converging lens. It is called converging lens. So the ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis will come and converge at a point on the principal axis on the principal axis and that you call it as focus right i can take another ray fine i will take a ray in the lower part of it fine and then again i will find that it will come and converge at the same point like this fine so this is another part of it yeah so, the rays are coming and converging at a point on the principal axis. These are parallel rays and that point is called focus. Now, watch carefully. Light is coming from left hand side. My left hand side and it is passing through, going through and it is coming to the right hand side. Right? So, the light is coming from here. I got the light here and it, the focus is formed and the distance between the optical center the optical center and the f the focus is called focal length okay so again i am introducing the term called focus that is f and the distance is focal length and that is going to be small f we are going to call it right so i hope you understand now i can take more number of rays no problem I can take infinite number of rays, rays coming parallel and rays coming parallel, they all will come and converge at a single point on the principal axis and that point is called focus, right? So this is going to be the focus. Suppose I have taken only this surface, right? Sir, what will happen to this surface? See, I said to you the lens is a thin lens. The lens is thin lens. So, whether refraction from here or here, it doesn't matter. So, on the safer side, instead of taking it one surface like this and one surface like that, we can take a middle point with the optical center like this, the center of the lens and we can call this as optical axis. We can call it as optical axis. That is the middle center point 
and really the ray which is coming here you can assume it is striking here and coming here it is striking here it is coming here for the sake of the diagram i have drawn it very big i have put it in a enlarged v now what i am going to do in the next part okay now you understand the word center of curvature two centers of curvature are there optical center the middle point of it focus where they come and converge focal length distance between optical center and the focus now i want you to understand one thing this distance from the optical center to the center of curvature that is called radius of curvature that is called radius of curvature so these are the terms you should be very much aware radius of curvature okay so these are the term curvature you are going to use it in different points you understand this point now now why did i call this as c1 because the ray is coming from left and converging at this point and this is the spherical surface okay this is the first spherical surface on which light is falling so i called this as c1 what are the second surface second surface is like this second surface is like this so i called this as c2 suppose if some teacher is going to teach you with the left hand okay and the teacher is a left hander right and he will say a ray of light is coming parallel to the principal axis and it will come and converge at a point it will come parallel to the principal axis and it will come and converge at a point yes that is also absolutely correct whether from the left to right or right to left the lens being a transparent object it can go from left to right or right to left and it will have focus this side or focus that side it doesn't matter because the lens is a spherical surface with the two uh, surfaces the spherical uh, surfaces it has got now with this idea i am going to erase the whole thing and i am going to simplify this right we are going to talk about this lens is called convex lens what is this lens called convex lens because it is bulged outward it is bulged outward again let me see let me draw a ray diagram with less number of rays okay so we learned all these words now okay fine so let me now take the center here center point here right and let me draw with large it should not be too what you call having the thing then you will get again and again doubt okay fine this is okay i think i prefer let me draw without this uh, thread that will be better for a thin lens this is better okay so this is a thin lens i have taken now i have optical axis at the middle fine and i have got a center of curvature okay for this surface right for this surface there is a center of curvature there is a middle point going to be optical center and let me take the point here somewhere and from here let me take a point somewhere here and let me join both lines together points together right with the straight line okay see now yes this is center of curvature 1 and this is center of curvature 2 fine you got it and this is for this surface it has come like this you should remember okay and i am going to say something first let us take a ray parallel to principal axis yes a ray parallel to principal axis now where is it going to strike it is going to strike the optical axis optical axis because when at the middle point the thin lens it strikes in this surface 
or in this spherical surface it does not matter because the lens is very 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 thin right so i am going to strike it at the optical axis right this is the ray parallel to the principal axis and this is the principal axis principal axis the ray which is passing through that will go without deviation <coughs> now i said to you the ray will converge at a point on the principal axis and that is called focus and the distance between optical center and the focus is called focal length at the distance between the center of curvature and the optical center and that is called radius of curvature that is called radius of curvature yeah this is very simple i hope you understand and i can take more parallel rays and i can strike it and this lens converging lens and that is called convex lens now another ray i will take it parallel to the principal axis and it is coming like this and striking and it is going to converge up it is going to converge upward now it is meeting at the point called focus one doubt which we may all get is on what basis is it converging i am going to divide the convex lens the spherical surface in three parts the first part is that there is a slab here watch carefully understand here yeah there is a glass slab here imagine if there is a glass slab and if a ray comes and strikes normally then it will go without deviation if it comes at an angle then it will bend towards the normal because it is from a denser uh, a rarer medium to denser medium and so in the glass slab the ray which is coming the principal axis is going without deviation because you can assume it is striking normally okay now we come to the other part of it fine and that is the upper region you look at the upper region very carefully you can draw a prism you can draw a prism fine now i got a prism inside here okay now in the case of a prism let me take a prism here you would have learnt it even in small classes a ray of light is coming striking and this is normal the ray should have gone in a straight line but it is from rarer to denser so naturally it will bend towards normal that is why when it comes here it should have gone in a straight line but it is bending towards normal it is bending towards normal where is the surface normal would be from somewhere here and then it is bending towards normal okay fine now what about this this part the lower part below the principal axis why is it going up very simple again draw a prism draw a prism this prism is an inverted prism yeah inverted prism now watch carefully again in this case again you see part is like this fine and the prism is like this now if you take a ray inverted prism okay now it is a prism is inverted like this right and the ray is coming and striking like this okay it's coming here parallel okay no problem for your understanding i will take little angle right and this ray should have gone in a straight line but it is bending towards normal and it will come out like this right and afterwards it will go towards like this and it will come like this so they are converging at a point i hope you understand the lens is can be made into two parts and from which we can understand how the refraction is taking place and this is a convex lens and also called converging 
it is also called a converging lens okay with the same stretch i would like to complete concave lens also right it does not require more information on that and and we will see how in a concave lens we can form i think better i do it in the next video thank you so much